was Amelia Earhart. Chapter seven, Chapter 8, The Final Flight Amelia Earhart wanted to fly around the world. And although other pilots had circled the globe, she would fly close to the equator. This would make a longer and harder tri trip. 29,000 miles. A special plane was needed, a Lockheed model called the Electra. The plane was large enough to carry 10 passengers, but Amelia had to, the seats removed. Extra fuel tanks were put in. This allowed the plane to fly up to 3,000 miles before stopping to refuel. Electra had a new, ra ra ah, new radio equipment. Amelia would be able to communicate by voice and code. It also had two engines that made it more complicated to fly. Amelia had to train with different pilots to learn how to fly it. It would take months to prepare for the trip. Amelia and George hired two navigators to fly with Amelia. They would help Amelia stay on course. The flight path would go from east to west. Amelia would take off from California and head towards Hawaii. On March 17, 1937, the Electra left Cali Oakland, California. Amelia and her two navigators arrived in Honolulu around 16 hours later. The first leg of the trip was a success. Then Amelia had an accident. As Amelia was taking off from Honolulu, the plane lurched out of control. The landing gear collapsed. A ring was torn up. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the $100,000 plane was badly damaged. It had to be shipped back to Lockheed on the mainland. Amelia, almost two months went by before the plane was ready to fly again. Because of the delay, one of the navigators could no longer continue the flight. That left only the other man, Fred Noonan. There was also another change. Due to the weather patterns, the flight path had to be revised. Amelia would now fly from west to east. On May 21st, Amelia left Oakland, California and headed east to Miami, Florida. The whole world was watching. The trip started off well. From Miami, Amelia flew to Puerto Rico. Then she flew along the East Coast to South America to Venezuela, then on to Suriname, and then Brazil. The Electra was holding up well, but there was not much room to move around. Amelia communicated with Fred Noonan by passing notes on a fishing pole. It was better than climbing over the extra fuel, fuel tanks. Amelia flew over 40 hours and 4,000 miles in the first week. And that was just the beginning. She flew over the Atlantic and crossed to Africa. Within three weeks, she had flown 20,000 miles in 135 days. Amelia was getting tired. She would be glad when the long hours of flying were over. By July 1st, Amelia, Amelia had reached New Guinea. From New Guinea, she would go to How Howland Island. That's and then to Honolulu, Hawaii. The next and last stop would be Oakland, California. That There were only 7,000 miles left to the 29,000-mile trip. Most of the last miles were over the Pacific Open, Ocean. On July 2nd, Amelia took off from New Guinea. The trip to Howland was to take about 19 hours. Howland was a tiny island in the Pacific only two miles long and three quarters of a mile wide. It would be very hard to find, but it was the only place to land and fuel. Amelia had to depend on Fred Noonan to spot the tiny strip of sand. To help Amelia and Fred, a U.S. Coast Guard ship was sent to Howland. The ship would be waiting on the island. It would send up a signal to guide the Electra in for landing. On July 2nd, Amelia took off from the New Guinea. She had radio contact with New Guinea for the first next seven hours, but then she went out of range. Amelia was supposed to reach Howland Island early the next morning. Throughout the night, the radio men on the Coast Guard ship heard short messages from Amelia. 
but they could not tell how far out she was. The captain was worried. Amelia did not seem to hear the radio message, and they couldn't get a fix on her when she called into them. At 7.42 a.m., the radio man on the Coast Guard ship got a brief message. Amelia said, We must be on, on you, but we cannot see you, and gas is running low. Been unable to reach you by radio. Again, the Coast Guards tried to respond. However, it seemed that Amelia could still not hear them. They tried to locate her plane, but her message was were no longer, were not long enough to do it. At 8.45 a.m., one more message came in from Amelia. The last thing she said was, We are running north and south. Amelia was frantically searching for Howland Island, but she never found it. Right away, a rescue mission was begun. More than 4,000 men on 10 ships searched the Pacific. Another 65 airplanes flew in to help search for Amelia and Fred. So what happened? Did Amelia's plane crash into the Pacific Ocean? Or was she able to land on some remote island? Neither Fred Noonan nor Amelia Earhart were ever found or heard from again. The mystery captured the public's imagination. For years, the plane's disappearance news stories popped up. Some said Amelia was a prisoner of war. Others said she was alive and well living on a remote island. But no story was ever proven true. Even today, people are still looking for Amelia's plane. An underwater robot submarine has scored the Pacific Ocean floor where the Electra might have gone down. Search parties still occasionally hike through remote Pacific Islands near Howland, hoping to find a clue in the overgrown jungle. Who knows? Someday the remains of Amelia's plane may be found. Whether that happens or not, it doesn't change what Amelia Earhart did in her lifetime. She didn't just fly planes. She didn't just break records. She opened the doors for women all over the world. She was a pioneer who said, you can do anything you decide to do.